All right. Good morning and good afternoon to those of you out on the East Coast. This is Brady with Street Smart. I um, want to thank all of you for joining today to learn a little bit more about Smart Work Zones. Um, just a couple quick things here before we get started. Um, screen. Okay, so first off, thank you. Thank you for the, the response. Um, it was actually quite a bit more than we had expected. Um, we had over um, 200 people sign up for this webinar. So um, definitely hits on the level of interest that exists for this topic. So we're definitely excited to share with you what we're doing and what we're seeing out in the industry. Um, want this to be a little bit different format of a webinar than maybe you're used to. I'm not gonna sit here and talk to you for 55 minutes and then take four minutes of questions at the end. Um, there's a chat feature within Zoom. Um, make sure to use that and send it over. I have a couple people here with me today. They're gonna be monitoring that. We'll pull out questions that, that, that are relevant and try to address those as we get going here. Um, if we were to crash and burn, and I had it happen a couple weeks ago, Zoom kicked everybody off the meeting, it happens. Um, just log right back into this same Zoom link that you use to get into this and we'll kind of pick up right where we left off. Um, like I said, it happened two weeks ago. I thought it was our internet connection, but it was actually a Zoom issue. So things happen. We're just gonna do the best we can. Uh, this is being recorded, so if you have others within your organization that want to see this or if you want to go back and review anything today, let us know. We can get you a copy of that. Um, and then at the end, there's going to be a quick poll with just three quick questions. Um, help us gauge kind of, um, you know, what topics you're most interested in, maybe future topics we could do if, um, you know, we continue to do more webinars like this, which based on the response today, I, I think we're going to. Exciting to share that I think we have something like 40, it might be a little bit more, out of the 50 states represented today in some capacity. Now, the nice thing about this webinar is it's kind of open to many different people. There's DOT professionals on here. There's um, owners and employees of traffic control companies around the nation, some engineering consultants. We have some people from different universities um, around the nation. We also have some attendees from New Zealand and Canada joining us. So. Um, thank you everyone again for your interest in this topic and um, we'll, we'll keep rocking. So a quick agenda for today, I um, want you just to understand who we are. So it kind of makes sense um, when we talk about this stuff, where we are in the industry and, and the role that we serve. We'll obviously define smart work zones and show you some examples of those in use out on the road today. And then really talk about, you know, what, what your next options might be understanding that you know many of you are coming at this webinar kind of at a, at a different position many of you have done several smart work zones some of you know you need to do some but you don't know how to get started we can help um, in, in each of those cases i have a couple people helping me today and we'll be able to call on them as needed uh, tim jackson heads up our nationwide smart work zone department if you will so all of our project managers and, and technicians report up to tim Ryan is our national sales manager. And again, this is Brady and I handle our marketing and business development. So who the heck is Street Smart? <clears throat> we were founded back in 1999. And what our niche is, is it's providing traffic safety equipment, specialized traffic safety equipment, primarily to traffic control companies. So we don't set barrels and cones. We don't do lane closures. Our customers do that work. And then we rent them, sometimes sell them this supplemental specialized equipment for them to, to get their job done and um, ensure they're, they're working with the world's best equipment. Okay, we're not a manufacturer, wanna make that clear, um, but we do represent the best brands really in the world in terms of message boards, aero boards, everything you see there, plus a few more things. Um, and we, we've really become what we consider to be the industry leader in terms of smart work zone integrations. And, and we'll talk about that integration piece here in a minute. Um, we're, we're extremely passionate about what we do. The traffic safety industry is, it's all we do. We don't rent skid loaders, we don't rent party tents. Um, so we show up to work every day and we live and breathe this stuff. Um, many of us are kind of technology nerds and um, that kind of shines, I think, in some of the innovative solutions we're able to, to put out on the highway. So it's 
as a national company, it's hard to get everybody together for a picture. So we did the best we can. This is a couple of weeks ago in our Minnesota branch. Probably 70% of our office is um, in Minnesota is shown in this photo here. So let's dive right in. So what the heck is a smart work zone? You might also hear them referred to as intelligent work zones. Um, again, if you have questions, please use the chat. I just want to make sure that there aren't any out there now. I don't see any. Um, I, I was hearing to see uh, 10 people say that we, we can't hear you, <laughs> but I think we're doing good so far. So, um, so think of, of smart work zones is basically just uh, a cluster or a grouping of traffic safety devices that can talk to each other. Um, and it's all about providing that real-time notification to motorists. And when I say real-time, I want to make it clear that I'm not talking about alerts popping into your phone as you're driving through a work zone or approaching a work zone. Yes, Waze um, and different platforms now have that ability. That's important. But this is like hitting people over the head with the messaging within the work zones on these massive uh, message boards, strobing lights, um, really, when they're in the meat of the work zone, getting their attention so they do one thing, and that's focus on driving safely uh, to making sure they get through, making sure all those, those contractors uh, can go home at the end of their shift. Okay. Um, one thing I like to call out is this is not a, like something you know, far off in the future. This is here. This is now. Um, we've been doing these for about 17 or 18 years as a company. So. Um, we'll, we'll continue to kind of show you some, some real world examples. So um, some quick, I guess, talking points on smart work zones. Obviously, you, you all know their main purpose, right? It's to make work zones safer. The cost, that's always a question. And it's probably a lot less than you'd think. If you think of all the money that gets spent on a, on a construction project, what we're seeing is it typically comes in less than 1% of the overall budget uh, can be tied to that smart work zone piece of it. And as more technologies continue to come onto the market, those costs um, are continuing to decrease. So um, the beauty of it, one of my favorite pieces of these smart work zones is that each one is applicable to that project. And you can add, remove devices as the project progresses to ensure safety is maintained throughout the duration of the project. Some statistics, many of you can probably rattle off the top of your head. Maybe a couple of you helped pull this slide together, but I pulled this from ATSA and it's all about work zone fatalities, unfortunately. So in 2017, almost 800 people, uh, motorists were killed within work zones. And also um, you can see it down there at the bottom, the, the number of workers killed. Um, these statistics, obviously we all are passionate about and need to continue to, to drive those down. And what this slide also represents is the need for this enhanced technology to be happening on non-interstate roadways. People have a tendency to, I think, always think, well, this would be great if we lived in a big city and had the money. Well, about 61% of all fatal crashes happen on non-interstate roads. And I can tell you right now, we have smart work zones from coast to coast in operation right now. And um, the uh, large chunk of those are, are in the heartland. Some of the areas that aren't as densely populated as you think. Um, places like you know, Oklahoma, Iowa, parts of Illinois, uh, rural Wisconsin even. So um, just hitting on the fact that these can be um, positioned anywhere um, you need them to be, okay? Um, about two thirds of all states have done at least one smart work zone. And the inclusion of these, as I mentioned, continues to rise. So um, I was talking with, with uh, John Jekylls yesterday and uh, many consider him to be the godfather of, of smart work zones. Been at this a long time, uh, 40 plus years, I believe. And, and, and he, this quote was interesting and it, it really popped out. It's basically, you know, what used to seem impossible is now getting specced in and it's commonplace. And, and that's true. We're, we're seeing more and more innovation year over year. And um, it just kind of highlights, if nothing else, um, encourage you to use us as a resource, take some of our best practices, whether you ultimately end up working with us or not. Um, we we want to make sure you're not starting from scratch. Um, different states, different agencies are a different kind of point in adopting smart work zones. 
And again, I want to stress, please don't start from scratch. Leverage your peers, leverage people on this call, and um, we can kind of springboard you ahead in the game. So I talked about this concept of a, a smart work zone integrator, and that's really the role we play. So it's kind of threefold. It's early on in the planning process, you know, consultants, DOTs come to us saying, we're planning on doing X, Y, and Z, and we're expecting five miles of queuing, or we know this is a, a hot spot, even going into the construction process, what can we do to alleviate, alleviate some of those pinch points once we get that lane closed? So we get involved early on in the planning process. We can even help um, give kind of some, not recommendations, but what we've seen in terms of how a smart work zone gets uh, budgeted and um, allocated and accounted for in the um, budgeting process and um, ultimately how it gets paid for. The equipment, so we hit on the fact we are a rental company and we can deliver it anywhere you need it. And that really um, helps a lot of people out. So in terms of wherever you need, whenever you need it, that's kind of our mantra. And then at the end of the job, the beauty of it, we take it away. You don't have to worry about it on your balance sheet and the technology becoming obsolete. And then the project management is key. I have Tim sitting next to me. And that's really about um, you know, the day-to-day -day operations, but even they're involved on in the planning piece of it, bringing our best practices to the table, because oftentimes there's consultants involved, there's DOT, there's a traffic safety company involved, one of our customers most often. And then, you know, maybe a handful of other uh, state patrol. It really depends on the size of the project and that project team. But we definitely uh, want to have a, a seat at that table to, to help ensure the, the project does um, go as smoothly as possible. So that was easy. we joke around Street Smart that we can be the easy button. Um, but we've heard that from our customers. And, and that kind of ties right into the fact that we are involved kind of from start to finish in these projects. And, um, and have really seen you know, the, the, the true collaboration and teamwork across those different agencies that I just mentioned um, work very nicely. I will pause for any questions. I see we have one up in the chat. We'll address that a little bit later on in, in the conversation, but um, anybody have anything before I dive into some of the kind of real world applications and, and how these are being used? Okay, we will keep plugging along. All right, you will hear me reference the gap job several times in this presentation. What the gap job is, is it's um, uh, I-25, which runs between Denver and Colorado Springs. Uh, I believe it's one of the busiest roads in Colorado. Hasn't had, up until a couple years ago, any major improvements since the day these photos were taken, which is back in the mid 50s. So um, Colorado selected Kramer North America as the general contractor. I would encourage anybody that's out west this summer or even this winter or spring, if you're anywhere near this, go drive this project. And it's not to see our stuff, although you'll probably see some of it out there. It's just to see the complexity and the magnitude of what they did out there. It's absolutely incredible. Um, hats off to CDOT, hats off to the Kramer team and all their subs that worked on this project because it's truly something to behold. It's 20 miles in each direction. Um, they're, they're widening the freeway substantially, adding express lanes, um, doing some really neat things with wildlife underpasses. I hadn't heard of that concept until a couple months ago, but obviously out there they have a ton of wildlife. This is a stretch of road that has the most wildlife versus vehicle collisions in the nation. So they put up 20 miles of uh, eight to 10 foot high wildlife fence on both sides of the roads. And then they have basically underpasses for elk and deer and whatever else to go under the freeway. So it's, they're keeping it off the, the freeway. So that's just one small part of the overall project. Um, this project for us, uh, we were involved kind of from the, the very front end. And it's basically, if you were to write a smart work zone, um, best practices and throw everything we had at it, this would be the job. And, and we're very proud of what our team has done here, the partnership. Um, Kramer's been awesome, CDOT, to work with. And uh, even the State Patrol, you'll see a video here in a minute. It's truly, and I, I know collaboration is a buzzword, but boy, when, when you see the level of planning that went into this project, it's no wonder that it's certainly on or ahead of schedule and, and the results they're getting are just unbelievable. So um, 
we'll, we'll talk more about some of the systems we have on that job. If you subscribe to Roads and Bridges, the July and August edition has a, a nice feature on the smart work zones of this project. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that if you haven't already. And there's also a link to it out on our, our webpage. And um, I, will, I will send a copy of this PowerPoint um, tomorrow to, to everyone that attended and even those that signed up but didn't attend. So I hit on a number of these things, 80,000 cars a day pass through that stretch of road. So um, it's, pretty, it's pretty exciting. All right. Um, what happens if there's an accident in the smart work zone? Let's take that question <laughs> that just popped up, Jim Marshall. Um, this GAP project, for example, one of the things they do on their, um, uh, they believe it's every week or every two weeks, they have a, a meeting, bring in all the stakeholders, including the local fire departments, the emergency first responders, the emergency tow trucks that are on call 24 seven, and they figure out, okay, this week, here's the lane shifts, this is how we're gonna plan to get uh, cars. If there's you know, something going on, somebody breaks down, maybe there's a fender better, get them off that roadway to keep traffic um, free flowing. So uh, they use you know, camera trailers to identify some of those um, incidents in real time. Um, so definitely uh, planning on the front end helps for those incidents within the work zone, because you're gonna have some. I mean, well, let's face it, um, even you know, if, if it's as smart as possible, you're gonna have some kind of um, just minor occurrences, hopefully within that work zone. Okay, so now we're gonna dig into what I consider to be some of the most common smart work zone systems or applications. So again, you have smart work zones as your overall umbrella. And then these are the different systems that you can add, remove to the project um, as, as the project di dictates. So probably one of the more common ones is, is what, what you've seen probably referred to as a cue warning system. And that's the concept of either using um, changeable message boards or some states like to use, uh, like you see on the right there, uh, four by eight static signs with flashing beacons on the top. The concept here is once the sensors that are upstream from these boards um, start to recognize traffic patterns that you define, so if speeds equal X, then display this. And we'll get into the logic sheets here a little bit in a minute. But it's all about real-time data. We don't want that sign to be saying stop traffic ahead when it's 60 mile an hour traffic in the middle of the day. So it has to be meaningful notification to the motorist, and that's exactly what we can do here. Leveraging point-to-point uh, -point radio communication between these two devices or um, even cellular modems is, um, is, what, is how we communicate between those boards. And then again, hitting on the, the biggest thing there, once, once the conditions are cleared, we're, we wanna clear that message because we have to be providing meaningful information to the motorists at all times. Otherwise, they're gonna ignore those signs. Trucks entering or even trucks exiting the highway systems. These are increasingly popular around the nation. Again, we can leverage changeable message signs or this static trailer with flashing lights. Um, similar concept, except here we're putting a sensor where those slow moving vehicles, the trucks are, are maybe they're on a haul road approaching the freeway or, or roadway, and then it sends a message back to that sign or message board. And then again, making sure that we're clearing it after 60 seconds, 90 seconds, however long we kind of figure out is gonna take that truck to get up to, to highway speeds. So the concept here is allowing traffic to, to merge over, give that truck uh, a little bit of room to, to get up to speed. Okay. Going here. Variable speed limit systems. So um, again, that gap, gap job um, both had the trucks entering system, it had the queue warning system, it also has variable speed limit systems. Um, some smart work zones just have queue warning systems. So again, it's only applicable um, to that particular project. And um, again, you can add, remove different pieces to it as, as the project rolls along. So uh, these are large portable trailers. You know, this sign from the very top to the ground is I believe maybe 14 or 15 feet. It, they're very large and uh, they are enforceable by, by law enforcement. So on that gap job, for example, I believe they took down every static 
speed limit sign and they only used these trailers. And they had, I think, over 30 of them in that, in that stretch. Um, the thing about that piece of Colorado is that on the northern end, up by Castle Rock, it could be 80 degrees and sunny and 18 miles south, they might be in a blizzard. And we've had that happen out there. So the ability to get that speed limit down to say 45, maybe 40 miles an hour when there's eight inches of snow on the ground within that work zone where they have you know, temporary lane closures and things like that is very important to, to maintain safety. So you can set these up on schedules. You can change them remotely. You don't have to be at the trailers. Um, Want to talk here, we kind of, worked with, with Vermac, one of our vendors, and took things to the next level on this job. And we created a, a very lengthy uh, system. We call it the Smart Portable Variable Speed Limit System. So it's the concept of combining a electronic speed sign, speed limit sign with a radar trailer, merging them together, and then adding some additional logic so that if the speeds are over X, it, it strobes these additional lights at the motorist as they're approaching it. So I'm gonna play a video that shows this in action. <clears throat> I wanna just preface the fact that the video is a little bit choppy since I'm playing it through YouTube and through Zoom, but the audio comes through somewhat decently and I think you'll get the gist of, of what this system does, and particularly the nighttime shots. Um, it's fun to be out there by these boards because you see that thing activate and then most of the time you immediately see brake lights. So it's truly getting the motorist's attention and, and getting them slow down. So again, bear with me on the choppiness of this video. Um, if you, if you wanna see more about this after the fact, you'll know how to get a hold of us. We're starting to see more and more smart work zones call for variable speed limit systems within the work zones. And that allows the contractors, the DOT, whoever's in charge to take the speed, say from 70 down to 60, even down to 50 when workers are present to create what we're calling the smart portable variable speed limit system. So the red and blue flashing lights that come on when drivers are exceeding the posted speed limit is instant feedback to sort of wake them up, have them take a look. starting to see more and more smart work zones call for variable speed limit systems within the work zones and that allows the contractors the DOT whoever's in charge to take the speed say from 70 down to 60 even down to 50 when workers are present to create what we're calling the smart portable variable speed limit system so the red and blue flashing lights that come on when drivers are exceeding the posted speed limit is instant feedback to sort of wake them up have them take a look down see what their speeds are at and adjust themselves. This is my 18th year in law enforcement for the Colorado State Patrol. And I've had the opportunity to work in a number of areas around the state. And something that's unique about that is that I've worked on construction projects everywhere I've ever been stationed. And this one is by far the largest and undoubtedly the safest project that I've been on. And so I think we have a project that's nearly 20 miles long that is at this scale and scope. The fact that nobody has lost their life as a result of the actual construction zone is pretty imp impressive. Okay. Hopefully that came through okay. Again, if you want more information on that, happy to, to share that with you. Um, it's, we've seen some great results with those trailers. A um, couple more things here within smart work zones that um, definitely prove to be of, of benefit are work zone camera trailers. So um, oftentimes when you're ripping up a road, you're taking down uh, um, existing camera infrastructure. So you have kind of blind spots. So these temporary trailers can integrate with uh, DOT uh, TMCs, travel management centers. So they have their wall of videos from their their existing fixed mount cameras, as well as from um, these portable camera trailers. They can identify incidents um, out in the work zone, uh, dispatch state patrol, dispatch tow trucks more quickly, make it safe for everyone. We've also done some pretty neat uh, incident detection 
using both sensors and then cameras, for example, to monitor emergency pull-off areas within work zones, because obviously if somebody's there changing a tire, that's a, a very dangerous situation. And we've seen DOTs use these to get automated email or text alerts so they can dispatch help and, and get that incident cleared as quickly as possible. So there is some secret sauce, if you will, behind how these things talk to one another. And all of that gets configured on uh, what we call the, the logic sheets. So again, in the planning phases of the project, we're identifying how much equipment is gonna be on the job, how many message boards, things like that. This is a bit of an eye chart, um, but believe it or not, some people get very excited about this page. Uh, we can help define this on the front end of the project, but then the beauty is maybe you get two days into the project, a week, a month, we can alter this at any time to make sure the logic is, is meeting the actual conditions out on the highway. So this is where you're setting the thresholds for your sensors so that if it's detecting traffic at X miles per hour, it's gonna display the message you want it to on the board, and then it will clear it after it gets back to, to normal traffic. So I definitely oversimplified this sheet, but this is kind of the, the nuts and bolts behind the scenes, how we're getting everything to talk to one another. Uh, with everything these days, there's a portal. So within this portal, you can get real-time analytics, you can get historical uh, reporting based on traffic speeds, traffic volumes, you know, all the normal things you can do in, in, with data collection, you have that at your fingertips within your work zone. On that gap job, they were able to kind of accelerate construction during COVID when it first started a couple months ago, due to the decreased levels of traffic out on the roadway. They looked back at some of the data and they figured out um, you know, what the, the traffic volumes were. And I believe they accomplished a lot of the work during the day that they otherwise would have had to do at night. So one kind of recent example, but the data collection piece is, is, is critical. It also helps to identify you know, those times of day when we're, they're most congested. So if you need to make changes, not only to the smart work zone system, but your overall traffic management planning, when you're setting lane closures, what time of day you're gonna move uh, concrete barricades, things like that, it helps drive some of those decisions. We talked about kind of that third um, circle of, of uh, smart work zone integrator in our role. It is the management piece. So um, reporting is obviously uh, big that I, I hit on. Um, the flexibility to kind of roll with the punches, so to speak, add devices, remove devices, make recommendations to engineers and, and kind of the boots on the ground, people out in the field. And then leveraging our best practices. Um, you know, again, having done this for 17 or 18 years, we're gonna bring recommended um, systems, recommended um, timing of when to move equipment, little things like that, that maybe you wouldn't have thought of on the front end of the, of the project. So we've all kind of uh, been spending lots of time with our kids, maybe grandkids, you know, something I hear, uh, you know, sometimes at the end of the day is, dad, we didn't do this today. And you said we were going to do that today. Obviously, there's a lot more we could talk about today. Um, but there's just quite honestly not enough time. And so I wanna just kind of highlight the fact that, um, you know, if, if you need more information on any of these systems, um, Tim's gonna talk a bit, a little bit about some of the other technologies that are out there that, that we're involved with, and we'll continue to do more on here in just a second. But I wanted to uh, just launch a quick poll. It should take you no more than about 40 seconds um, to answer the following questions. Um, kind of about smart work zones. And these will be anonymous, so others won't see your replies. And I'll give you about a minute to complete these three questions, please.
Okay, maybe about 20 more seconds. If you haven't completed that poll, it should have popped up on your screen. So please do that and we'll get wrapped up. Again, if you have questions, please put them in the chat and we can address those here. If you have other questions that you wanna save for offline, uh, we'll show you here in just a second how to get a hold of us. Certainly uh, interested in helping you learn more about any of these systems that we've talked about. All right, looks like we got 68% of the votes in. So if you haven't voted, please do so. Okay. Thank you for completing that poll. So I'm gonna turn it over to Tim here real quick. Um, again, Tim is our national smart work zone manager and he's gonna just um, maybe share with us some of the um, other technologies that, that we're involved in. Oops, hold on, I gotta start my video. Sorry about that. And um, kind of, some of the other maybe ancillary systems that we're um, seeing customers talk about and that we're involved with. Yeah, so I'm seeing a lot of questions come through. Uh, and I think some of us might touch on it of sort of what's next and uh, the idea of autonomous vehicles with uh, some of the technology in the future. And we hope that maybe this will be the foundation to uh, get the dialogue going on what's out there now and some of the specs we're seeing and then you know, continue these conversations into the, into the future. Um, you know, uh, in this first bullet point here, the, the lot of discussion of what's in the market now is the idea of connected work zones and, and what connects the work zone. Hold on one second. I'm getting a couple of people saying they can't hear you. Um, what are you doing wrong here? Um, I guess, can somebody just chat to verify they can hear me? Sorry to do that, but that's where we're at. it's clear now. Okay. Um, Tim, maybe um, just start over. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> technical difficulty. So the the future discussion on these smart work zones is obviously what's next and, and where are we at uh, moving forward. Um, you know, there's a lot of buzzwords around the idea of. Uh, what what can speak to cars, autonomous vehicles, et cetera. Um, in the now, we're looking at connected lane closures, connected work zones. That's through smart aero boards, uh, connected uh, location devices. Uh, there's products now with Icone, Vermac, uh, other manufacturers are in the market. And the idea of that is wh where is a work zone? When was it? Is it still occurring? What lane is closed? Um, and, and the idea of then taking that data and, and providing it to 511 third-party mapping sources, uh, putting it on the public and allowing that data to be uh, um, digested and then put out to other applications like Waze, et cetera. Um, the, that's in the now. Uh, and, and so is you know, this next bullet point with the idea of probe data. And, and the idea of probe data is harvesting uh, you know, historical data, cell phone, information, location services, all, all the data that provides Google Maps to tell you it takes 18 minutes to get to work, et cetera. That's being used today, but uh, primarily for alternate route options uh, through message boards, uh, travel times, et cetera. Um, the, the next bullet point we're looking at is the smart works on data exchange. I've seen a lot of questions come through here today on that. Um, this, is, this is something that's in the works now and funding is going through to to find a way to harmonize and streamline all of these data sources and the idea of nationwide work zones in a similar way to the connected work, work zone to how do we outport a unified data stream to Google, to Waze, to all these providers, uh, and then also to uh, improve the idea of autonomous vehicles and what they're seeing and when they know a work zone's coming up and uh, helping their eyes as a vehicle to, to know what the conditions are in, a, in an abnormal uh, uh, environment from their, from their known data set uh, on the roadways. Um, some other systems that we're starting to see uh, specced in and, and grow legs are, you know, overheight vehicle detection. Uh, if, a, if a truck is heading towards a new bridge or existing bridge or, or something that's uh, 
gonna impact it's a triggering system to notify the driver to stop. Uh, wrong way driver notifications, a similar application for if a driver is uh, rerouted and somehow ends up uh, going the wrong way down the highway to, to notify either people in a work zone or the driver themselves that that, that is the wrong way. Um, we're also looking at intrusion alarms, which is uh, we've just recently been seeing quite a bit of. And this is the idea that uh, using a technology to um, inform a, a worker, uh, either locally or through a siren, et cetera, that someone has broken the cone zone and they're in the work zone and they're coming at them. And, and it's a, a vibrating device or a, a siren that can say, you got to get out of the way or heads up. Um, so we're, we're seeing uh, that start to grow legs in, in the industry. Um, the other concept we're seeing here is not necessarily even um, active work zones, but the idea of preliminary assessment for, for an intersection, uh, how, how we can use uh, camera streams to uh, quantify video data to see where, where near misses are occurring, uh, doing better intersection design and applying that to, to roadways as well. So um, th there's a lot of technology out there. Um, and, and I hope that if there's uh, consultants, uh, manufacturers, someone on the line that has more information or knows of uh, new specs coming out or new technologies or something we're missing, I, I would love to hear it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if we could get that shared with us, I I'd love to continue these and get more dialogue on some of the future of this technology. Cool. Thank you so much, Tim. Yeah, I'll just echo that, you know, we have, vendors come to us all the time and, and ask about, hey, would you like to try X, Y, and Z? And the fact that we have these systems spread across the United States um, in different climates and different applications, we're always looking at, at kind of, you know, what else is out there, throw it out in a work zone for a couple of weeks and, and get some feedback. So to echo what Tim said, I know there's a lot of manufacturers on, if you have something in beta or R&D, if we can help in any way, uh, please, please let us know. We're always up, open to things like that. Okay, so you're either doing them today or you like what you've seen and, and you want to maybe take the next step. And again, I want to just stress, please don't start from scratch. Uh, I heard it a couple of years ago at an ATSA convention. Well, uh, DOT was telling me how in the next two years they were going to start uh, a smart work zone program. And they, they were literally starting from scratch. It's kind of like nails on a chalkboard. Again, whether you use us or not, um, leverage some of our best practices. We'll put you in touch with, with your peers around the, the nation so you're not uh, starting from a blank piece of paper. Uh, getting started is easier than you think. So what happens is most of the time there's interest. Most of the time they have a current road project somewhere in their state and we add a queue warning system or a truck entry system. That's how easy it is to get started. So um, I heard someone say the other day, if, if you had a house full of mice, you wouldn't stare at the mouse trap and figure out how to design the perfect mouse trap. You just set a bunch of mouse traps. So a little bit of that mentality is don't overthink it and, and let us help you get started. Um, we're available for follow-up calls, obviously, to um, talk on a specific system maybe that we reviewed today. If you have a targeted audience within your agency or your company, please, happy to do a, a similar presentation like we did today to, to educate as many people as we can. Um, you know, if we saved one injury or one fatality as a result of this conversation today, I'm extremely happy. Obviously, we could all probably say the same thing. So I included Tim's information down at the bottom. Um, Street Smart Rental is our, our website. And you all have my contact information as a result of this webinar. I will send a follow-up uh, email tomorrow with um, some of the, the links to this presentation. But um, again, I want to stress we're here as a resource and um, happy to help however we can. Tim or Dave, are there any questions in the chat that we maybe didn't respond to or any that we want to bring up? I saw one around uh, Michigan speed limits. Uh, so Ryan responded, re yeah. Reply to that, okay. Can we just summarize that one a little bit and what the answer was in case um, others didn't see that, please? Yeah. So the question was what? <laughs> okay. Um, 
So I don't know if everybody can see that on my screen. Let me, hold on, bear with me. Still a Zoom rookie. Let me see if I can put that chat up. Uh, can you see that? I don't know if they can. Okay, so let's just read them. Um, so Lindsay from Michigan, thank you, Lindsay. In Michigan, we have to complete temporary traffic control orders when we reduce speeds of more than 10 miles per hour. This is legal basis for modified speed limits in our work zones. In states that have something similar, have you altered state law to allow for their use or products like this are found flexible in your state interpretation of when these orders are necessary? Again, let's be clear, we're not um, printing speed tickets from these devices. I should have said that when I was on that slide. There are some systems like that. We don't get into that yet. Um, so Lindsay's question was around the portable electronic speed limit trailers. And Ryan answered, um, within the variable speed, the architecture behind the automation functions can be uh, set per the thresholds on speed drops or increases. Um, example, should it change from 50 down to 40, it would send a message to the right person to approve or change or modify that assumption. Okay, so yeah, like out in Colorado, I believe, if the traffic management center dictates the need to change the speeds, I believe they have an approval process in place um, to make that happen. So again, out there, it's extremely collaborative team. Um, I should know this, I don't off the top of my head, if you know they had to go through some sort of a legal process with state law, but I think maybe the fact they have um, the gentleman you saw in that video, Officer Burt, involved in the project that probably you know sped that conversation up if nothing else. So, Lindsay, I hope that helps. Uh, if it didn't, let us know. Um, are there any others, guys, that maybe the group would want to see? Um, the Steve Johnson, thank you for your question. Do, do your platforms provide data to the WZD Act, so work zone data exchange feeds? And the answer to that is yes, right? Yes. So yeah. you want to maybe just explain for those that might not know what that is, Tim, the, the work zone data exchange? Right. So the work zone data exchange is, you know, it's it's currently in in the process of creating a uniform data set and a way to output uh, data from across these platforms. Uh, for third party groups to to grab that data and use it for autonomous vehicles, mapping software, et cetera. Um, so currently uh, that is in the process and funding has just gotten approved to, to put it to real world use. So um, we have a means to export XML feeds uh, and uh, some other formats that uh, TMCs or who, uh, consultants, whoever wants to onboard that data can, but we, currently have our IT manager uh, on one of the um, groups for the data exchange. And then we also have partnerships with some of our software providers who are also spearheading this as well as a, as a private sector partner in this. So currently um, I, I would say yes, but it is still in the early phases of becoming a formalized uh, feed at this point. Right. Great. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Stephanie Hilton, thank you for the question. Do you guys also install the supplies? What is your procedure? So I mentioned um, early on that we typically partner with traffic control companies regionally around the nation. So think of a road construction project. The traffic control company is hired to do a number of things. Um, maybe some flagging, set barrels and cones, concrete barrier, you know, they, they run the gamut. So those companies are street smart customers. And what happens is we supply the additional sensor trailers, the message boards, um, the software, the project management of the smart work zone piece of their overall traffic management piece of the, of the, of the project. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, we also work like with Kramer, they're a large general contractor. They took on the traffic control piece of it or a large chunk of it on that gap job. And um, we helped them, we partnered directly with Kramer on this smart work zone piece. That project's in a, a bit of an anomaly just based on the size and scope. But um, you know what we do is we leverage kind of those regional traffic control companies. They're the experts in their areas. we simply get them the, the supplemental specialized equipment that they need to make all these uh, devices talk to one another and then to be able to monitor it, get the reporting out and provide that backend support um, so that 
it's, it maintains its safety throughout the project. Okay, let's take a couple more. This is kind of fun. <laughs> Any others pop up? <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, with that, again, I want to really thank you all for attending. If there are others around the industry, outside of your organization, anyone at all that might be interested in any of these topics, please point them to our direction. We will personally call them, email them, um, you know, review some of the data we just went over and make sure that they're, they're getting what they need so that we can all ensure these work zones are absolutely as safe as possible. So with that, have a great day and um, thanks again for joining.